Okay, we log back in as administrator. And now we want to go ahead and create some users and add them to groups and follow Microsoft's AGU DLP strategy. And we'll start looking at permissions and things before we go into group policy. Before we do this, though, um, I'm having to use cryptic passwords. And that's a good thing for a secure network. You don't want simple passwords um, on a real network. But just to make things easier for me, I want to be able to use short passwords, simple passwords. I'm going to turn that option off. And the way to do that, I'm going to go ahead and launch a Mickey Mouse console and in our Microsoft Management Console um, I'm going to go ahead and add my Group Policy Management tool and this time I want to edit let me go here, domains, pirates.org okay Okay. And this time I want to edit my default domain policy. And I'm going to go here under computer configuration, Windows settings, security. And I want to look at account policies. Notice there are three policies here, password policy, account lockout policy, Kerberos policy. I'm interested in password policy. This is sort of the first item that I want to edit. Let's look at a couple of the options here. Um, store passwords using reversible encryption. Um, that's been disabled because that's more secure. Makes it more difficult to recover, but also more difficult to reverse and, and you know decrypt that way. Password must meet complexity requirements has been enabled. I'm going to disable this. It's good I did to leave it enabled. You shouldn't disable it, but I'm just going to disable it again to make things a little easier. What that does when it's enabled is it forces you to combine three of four categories for your passwords. And the categories are this, capital letters, lowercase letters, uh, symbols, and numbers. So any three, you know, combination of three of those would be considered a complex password. But if I just had, say, upper and lowercase, that's not complex. If I just had numbers and symbols, that's not complex. I'd have to have, like, a capital letter and a lowercase letter and a number, or a lowercase letter and a symbol and a number, but, you know, some combination of three of those four. And that's good because it makes your passwords much more difficult to brute force and much more resilient against dictionary attacks. Um, the minimum password length, I'm going to go ahead and change to four characters. Again, not a good idea in a real environment, but to make things easier in our lab, we'll just do that. Minimum password age um, is one day, and that just keeps them from changing their password uh, ten times in a day. That would be very annoying to you as an administrator, because they'd probably forget and have to call you and bug you three or four times, and that would interrupt your game of solitaire. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, we're very busy doing important things all day, aren't we? Um, the maximum password age of 42 days means that they need to change their password. You know, just a few, you know, a little bit more than a month, so maybe 10, 12 days more than a month, but um, that way they have to change their password. The more, you know, the longer you have the same password, the more susceptible you are to a brute force attack. Um, the, the, you give the hacker more time to try to, you know, build up a dictionary of words to try, or social engineer something to try to get a password, or uh, to brute force something with, you know, software that just mass massively tries to compute all of the possible combinations in a password. So that helps increase your security. And enforcing password history, this is kind of a neat option. This just means that they won't be able to use the same password until 24 passwords later. And by then, hopefully, they've probably forgotten their first password. So those are some security settings. Um, here are some other security settings. Account lockout duration, it's not defined. But you know, by default, I mean, we could make this less or more. But by default, if I define this and I say OK, then these are dependencies. It's also going to set an account lockout threshold and what that'll do again is that cuts down on brute force attacks because you know after five invalid logon attempts it's gonna lock my machine for half an hour before I'll be able to try again now that's annoying to the end user um, you know they're mad because maybe they came in they weren't paying attention they typed in their password wrong five times um, you know butterfingers and now they have to wait half an hour before they can get into their system or they have to call you on the phone and you have to unlock it you know from one of your domain controllers. But it's great for a hacker because a hacker who's trying to hack that account, um, you know, he was, if he was trying to brute force that account, he's only going to get five tries. And then the account's going to be locked out for half an hour. So it would take him forever to try to brute force that account. 
So it's, it's actually a good idea to define an account lockout policy for that threshold, but I'm going to undefine it. Again, in a real environment, we would want this. We would want the security that we get from it, but in a lab environment, we're just going to simplify things to make things faster and easier. Hopefully, so we can meet that 10-minute clip requirement on YouTube. Um, all right, we have changed these settings. I'm going to go ahead and close my management console.